See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. You'll be a vessel that God can work. Because there's this whole thing where we as believers think we are losing. Because you were told, first thing you was told, you are a sinner. Born a sinner. My mother's birth is not my beginnings. Hush, because most folks haven't got there. Your mother's birth is not your beginnings. You get a hint of that when Jeremiah is talking to God prior to Jesus. Jeremiah is talking to God, and, and God said right out loud, I knew you, which means you have an existence prior to your mother's birth. I knew you. Before I formed you or framed you, this, this, it's, it's an inter interesting difference before, um, uh, between forming and framing. And the correct word is before I framed you in your mother's womb. He said, now anybody build houses and stuff? You set up the frame first. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. Say now, now what goes now? Now the fullness of the house is not the frame. You frame the house, and then you put up the walls and so forth and so forth, and, and the furniture and all that. But the house is framed. So you've been framed. You're the framework of God. Uh -huh. But what has filled you? <laughs> what kind of material have you been filled with? Don't blame God. He did the framing. But what kind of material have you been filled with? See, what happens is when you're born, folks started telling you who you are and what they expect you to be. Not only your family tell you who you are, your educators tell you who you are, society, society tell you who you are, and you have created this ego which you made. Now, it who don't know who you are try to tell you who you are. You are a mask of confusion. Come on, yeah. They wrote a song about it. <laughs> you, are <a> <laughs> you, you are a mask of confusion. You don't know where you're going, and every day you wake up saying, what should I do today? Uh -huh. Because you don't know nothing about yourself. Come on. Hint, God never asked you to ask, what should I do today? That's not the Holy Ghost saying, what should I do? The Holy Ghost knows your design, and he knows what you were designed for. Yeah, yeah. And what he will do is show you what you are to do today. Uh -huh. But you don't have God's logic about yourself. Come on. Come on. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. amen. We don't have God's logic about ourselves. I want you to turn around and look at somebody. Just look at somebody. Anybody, don't matter. To your right, to your left, look at somebody. Amen. Now, I want you to know, now, now I'm not talking about their be behavior. I'm not talking about their life history. I want you to know that they are the will of God. Oh, sucky. Now. See, see, you might have all kind of variants on their behavior. You might not like what they wear. You might not like the color of their skin. But they are the will of God because they first originated in God's mind. So from now on, you got to deal with them different. You, are, you, like to, you, like to, you like to identify yourself and say, oh, they're not like me. I ain't got nothing to do with them. They're not like me. They ain't got nothing to do with them. I love you, Lord, but I ain't got nothing to do with them. And the scripture says, you don't have never seen God, and yet you say you love him, 
but you at variance with your brother who you see all the time. How can the love of God be in your heart if you don't like your brother? And they all, including you, come from God. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. See, we got all kinds of things. I don't like them because of their political party. I don't like Democrats. I don't like Republicans. I don't like gays. I don't like heterosexuals. I don't like dogs. I don't like chocolate. I don't like vanilla ice cream. You just feel what I don't like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The earth is the Lord's. There, he has framed everything in the earth with his word. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all better catch on to this. So you better change your attitude because you're not fighting with no devil. No, no. No, no. I said you're not at variance with no devil. Amen. You're at variance with the will of God. Yes, yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Woo. Well, they act like, we ain't talking about their acts yet. Because most folks' actions has to do with their identity. And if their identity is false, then they're going to act false. They are creators. And have you noticed that everybody increases? Here's something that I want you to uh, uh, know, pick note of. Because uh, everybody thinks getting money means increase. No, 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 no. You increase no matter what you do, with money, without money. You increase in poverty. You increase in sickness. You increase in crazy. You are you are you are born. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you are born to increase. Say that. Now I've said a lot. That's why I'm, I'm watching y'all faces because a lot of y'all I didn't miss. I didn't stepped on a lot of religion in here so far. But don't worry about it. You'll get over it. You will get over your religious state. Well, watch this. So you have increased uh-huh. because you are a creator, and you can miscreate. Yes. There is only one God. And one son. Yes. Jesus, oh, well not, well not particularly Jesus. Christ is the son of God. Yes. Christ is the son of God. Amen. And all of us, including Jesus, was in Christ. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're in Christ. And that is the promise is made to Christ. Now, if Christ is not a projection, but an extension, I I have some things plugged up right here to an extension card. And because they plugged up to the extension card and the card is plugged up to electricity, the same electricity that is in that card is now available to these machines. No different electricity, the same one. So seeing that we are, Christ is an extension of God, he's plugged into God's holiness. He's plugged into God's love. He's plugged into God's perfection. Now this is how much God loves you instead of you being a a, a reproduction and find misunderstanding. He puts you in the one promise. I know this is is not church. That's why we ain't meeting in a church. Have y'all ever wondered why we meeting in this building and not in a church? It's not by accident. This building doesn't have a flow on, on my, or influence on my sermon, but this is not a churchy message. Because you can go to church and you're going to hear something else. You're going to hear about differences. You're going to hear about hell. You're going to hear about the devil. You're going to hear about none of that here other than me to tell you there ain't no devil, there ain't no hell, and you don't, and you don't lose. Amen. Now watch this. You are only as good as you allow yourself to be. Look at your neighbor and say, I am only as good as I allow myself to be. Tell your neighbor, I set the parameters and the limitation on my life based on what I believe about myself. You are your own problem. <laughs> you create your own hardships. That's why you ain't got no joy, because you done created a mess you don't know how to get out of. Amen. 
So, so in knowing this, that Christ is the extension of God, and we are in Christ, and he knew me while I was in Christ, he called me, named me, and sanctified me holy. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been called, called, named, named, sanctified sanctified as holy. holy. Tell them, I ain't going to ever listen to you again (laughs) when you tell me I'm not holy. Because the promise of God is eternal. There is no take back. There is no repentance. He don't take back what he's already said. He's not confused. He said, I know my thoughts toward you. You may not know them, but God knows his thought. Look at your neighbor and say, God knows his thought. God knows his mind concerning me. And here is one of the promises that God gave you. Here is one of the promises that God gave you. And he knows his thought and his mind toward you when he gave you this promise. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say all things. Say all things. Work together. To my good. good. Now let me tell you why. Because God is good and he can't give you nothing else but good. So no matter how bad you are, everything has to work to his good that he's gave you. Uh Oh, come on now. But if you don't think you're worthy of the good that God's given you, you're going to reject the good. I'm not worthy. I hear people talking, I'm not worthy of that. I'm not ready for that blessing. I'm not ready. I'm not worthy for that. I'm ready for all the good. I said I'm ready for all good. Because good that God is to me is not based on my behavior. It's based on his love for me, not my love for him. God is good to me because he loves me. What he does for me is because of how he feels toward me. You and nobody else has anything to do with God being good to me. I can't even mess it up because he loves me more than I love myself. He knows me better than I know myself. And God is good. And God is so brilliant, Hawkins, that no matter how much I mess up, he will straighten it up for my good. Why? Because he loves me. Christmas. The, some, some Christians are the saddest folk on the planet. They all pissed off. Because somebody who they think ain't no good is getting all the blessings. They even come up with crazy messages about the wealth of the wicked. Ain't no wicked. All wealth belongs to God. Why they got it and you don't. Let me ask you this. I, I, I think because you're listening to me, I'm just going to assume you saved. I'm, you know, ass out of me, ass out of you. But I'm going to assume you have Christ in your heart. I'm going to assume that you will say, Jesus is Lord. That's my assumption. Now, How many of you have not flown in an airplane? Okay, my grandson here says he hasn't flown. There's a lot of Christians who will not fly in an airplane to this day, 2022. They will not And they're still making statements like, if God wanted me to fly, he would have gave me some wings. And so they don't fly nowhere. They they, they drive everywhere, ride a train, whatever, but they're not going to get in the airplane. And they go to church, they, they believe that Jesus is Lord, and they think those planes are devil Demon inventions. And they will not fly. So, according to them, all of us believers who get in a plane, we're in the belly of hell. 
wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Now. I ain't through with this. Now, here you are on the plane. You're not feeling no fire. Now, some of y'all are still scared. But most of you that have flown enough, you don't have that fear no more. And they, and, and, and they bring in you food and drink, and you get up and go to the toilet where you fly. Yes. Amen. You're flying, and you get into your destination quicker and safely. Can I get an amen? amen? But how many of you know that while you are flying, you're working a law? You work in the law of lift and flight. Amen. But how many of you know that while the law of lift and flight is negating the law of gravity, yes. Yes. gravity has not disappeared. Because at any time that that plane stopped working the law of lift and flight, gravity is going to take over. Yes. Yes. And based on your elevation, and the velocity of your come down to earth will determine whether you will live or die. Two laws, both in existence. And one law put one to naught. How many of y'all flying yet? See, if you work the law of life, it will negate the law of sin and death. Uh, but don't worry. If you ever stop working the law of life, the law of sin and death, come on, talk to me now, is waiting to capture you and pull you down. And and it all depends on how high, come on, listen to me now, you have flown before you stop working the law of life on how severe your crash or your come down would be. We have seen that in the news and in the media lately with men of God who have been high. But sin and death has worked and brought them to low. And their crash has been devastating. On a, on a lesser degree, you have the opportunity to work the law of life every day. Amen. To free you from the law of sin and death. Yes. Yes. Go with me in your Bibles. to the 8th chapter of Romans. Y'all know this is one of my favorites. So y'all, your Bible, if you, if you have a Bible, it, it automatically just going to flip there. But if you have a, a, a tablet, it, it's going to go there too because it automatically knows where to go. See, I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was concerned and then the Spirit of God has been sharing with me lately. You cannot change nobody. <laughs> I said again. The Spirit of God reminded me, you cannot change nobody. Now, now as a parent and as a pastor, I'm in the business of wanting to change you. I want to change you. I want to influence you. I want to change you. I want to change my children. I want to change my grandchildren. I want everybody to pay attention to me because I don't want them to go to a hard place. Uh -huh. But I don't, but I can't change nobody. Come on, come on. <laughs> Boy, I, I said, not a little bit. He said, you can't change nothing. You can't change nothing about anybody. Give up the change and just tell the truth. And my pastor says it all the time, and it's a very elegant way. Amen. 
I'm not responsible for you. I'm just responsible to you. He says it all the time. He says, you know, like, you know, he deep. Didn't go to college or nothing. He just got some deep, deep. That's deep. We all need to understand that. I'm not responsible for you. Amen. I'm responsible to you. I can't change you. But I can live before you as a model of the word that I preach. Don't let me preach this word and, and be like you. If I'm preaching this word, I ought to be happy. I, have, I should have all my needs met. Because if anybody believed me, it should be me. I want to say it again. If anybody believed me, it should be me. So here it is. I believe this right here in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now. Everybody say now. No condemnation. Stop. See, the best way to end judgment is to always live in the now. When you live in the now, there is no past. So, Sister Jackie, when I look at you, I see you now, and I don't remember yesterday. In fact, I don't remember five minutes ago. Because I'm living in the now. To way, the, the way to arrest your ego from influencing you in going the wrong direction, always live in the now. The ego can only live in the past and in the future. It cannot live in the now. Your power is now. Your faith is now. Eternity lived is now. And what confuses many of us is the, is the, is the aspect of time. Daylight, sunlight, night, stars, you know, the, the clock moving around. So we don't understand what now is, but time is also hidden in now because time don't exist. It's, we created this as a measurement of our progress toward God. But time don't exist. Everything is now. That's why Paul called it. And he says, set your mind above. Because it doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing. Set your mind at the finish. You're already seated at the right hand of God. That's where you are now. And when you start living from your eternal now, nothing can bother you. You don't worry about nothing. Because you know, it's done. I live from it's done. I, now, we might, we might have to work it out in this thing we call time, but it's already done. I've already won. It does not matter what faces me. I already finished. When Jesus said it, it is finished, he spoke for all of us. It is finished finished. When God says in Hebrews he's upset with us because we have not entered his rest. How many of you are worried today? Don't raise your hands. I want you to lie. How many of you are worried and concerned and fretting? Why are you worried, concerned, and fretting? Because you've already finished. It's already done. It doesn't matter how you worry. It doesn't matter how you fret. It's going to work out and you don't have nothing to do with it. You may as well relax. This man said to me, I don't know if he was serious, but he was at my house. And he said this to me, and it made me think. You don't think I listen to you, but I do. He said this to me, and I said, well, is that prophetic? Was he prophesying to me, or was he was criticizing me in a loving way? What was Hawkins doing? But he said it. He looked at me, and he says, have you taken your oars out the water yet? That came, for some of y'all, I don't know how many was there, that came as a prophecy to me when Dr. Miller and Sister Miller was alive pastoring the church. Called me, over 30 something nine years, called me up front. Called me up front. Sister Miller couldn't get my name right. She called me up front, had me stand up front, and they, they prophesied to me. And at the end of the prophecy, Dr. Miller said, he looked at me, he says, you can take your oars out the water, for the Holy Spirit has filled your cells. Over 30 years ago, and I've been humping 
and working and fretting and trying to make it work and trying to put this together and that together. I hadn't entered the rest yet. 30 years ago, God says, 30 years ago, 30 years ago, he says, take your oars out the water. And he's in my house doing some work for me. He looked at me and said, I don't know if it was the Spirit of God. He looked at me and said, have you taken your oars out the water yet? And at that point, the answer was no. But I have today. <laughs> Over 30 years. I don't know what word didn't come to you yet. Mine is 30 years old, but it hasn't changed. This is my whole point. It has not changed. God does not change his mind about you. And all his promises are yea. Come on, talk to me, church. His, all his promises are yea. Come on now. And amen. Yea and amen. He is inviting us to enter his rest. He is inviting us to enter his rest. Sister Cheryl, he's telling you, enter the rest. Put your feet up and rest. Rest. And let God bring the world to your feet. Let God bring you every promise. Let God bring you every blessing to your doorstep. We sing the song. We say, my wife likes the song. Sing the song. God got a blessing with your name on it. Well, since it got my name on it, it got my address too. Take your oars. Come on, church. Out the water. Quit fretting and worrying about what somebody else think about you. It doesn't matter what somebody think about you. It's your God, my God, your father, my father says, I know my thoughts. And nobody else is going to influence what I think about you. And you're not going to influence what I think about you. No one can change my mind about you. Look at your name and say, God knows his mind about you. See, the best thing for you to do is to settle down and be blessed. We're trying to get blessed and just what? Be blessed. And look at the many ways that God can give blessings to you. There is there for now. The reason we bring sickness on ourselves, Sister Dolores, is because we condemn ourselves. You are feeling, based on religious conversation, you guilty. You ought to know better by now. How long have you been in Bible study and you don't know better by now? <laughs> Saint of God, hear me clearly. Your ego and God will not agree. Ever. If you listen to your ego, you will always be confused. Yes, yes. Your ego will always put your perfection in the future. Come on. The Holy Spirit says to you, now you are your father's heartbeat. Now you are his glory. Now you are your father's joy. Not in the future, now. Well, what about my mistake? Your father says, it was a mistake. And your father is what? Love. Yes. Your father is what? Love. love. Your father is what? Love. love. Not only is love perfect, but love covers. Come on, talk to me. Covers what? A multitude. Uh, come on now, talk to me. A multitude of what? Faults. So when you look at your fault, you shouldn't see a fault. Come on, talk to me, church. You ought to see a love spot. I can't see a black spot. I just see what? A love spot. Because a love spot has covered my mistake. Come on, talk to me here. So if I'm looking in my spot, I can't find the spot because all I see is love. And love will cast out, do away with fear on any level. When I walk in love, I will be working the law of life. 
and the law of life equates to the law of lift. Oh, this lift. Do we have a song? We wrote a song about it. Love lifted me. When I was sinking deep in sin, far, come on, talk to me now, far away. Somebody heard my cry. And from those waters, lifted me. And now what? Set, come on, talk to me, church. Safe and I when? Now. You keep fighting on your now blessing. You keep fighting against your now breakthrough. You think breakthrough is in the future. You already done broken through. Look at your neighbor, pat him on the shoulder, and say, you are, you are your breakthrough. Tell him, say, you are your breakthrough. Tell them, you have already broken through. Last point. Some of us kind of ridiculous. We, we, we have preached ridiculous. We, say folk are ridiculous. That's why church people, you know, young people don't come to church because y'all talk, y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Y'all confused. And somebody listening to all this, I don't want that. I believe in God, but that's crazy. How can God, who has all, all power, lose you? How can God, who's everywhere, the same and the same everywhere, lose you? How you lost? How he not know where you are? Look at the neighbor and say, God loves me. And there's nothing you could do about it. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. I got to keep saying it because y'all leave out of here, turn on some Christian uh, station, and somebody's going to be telling you God don't love you and you a sinner. No, God loves you. Say this with me. Now, now, watch this. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Have you heard that to the pure? See, y'all can even finish it for me. Y'all can even finish it for me. What does that say to you? Does that say that the pure sees impurity? No, because it says to the what? Pure. What? That means everything is pure. Is it, am I right about it? How many of you believe that God is pure? Mm. I, I, I don't put your hands down, so I want I want I want I want I want I want to get y'all on this one. How many of y'all believe God is pure? Come come hold, hold them up and wave at me. I believe God is pure. Now, if the pure, now I want you to follow this thought. If the pure can only see purity. And God is pure. How many of you know that God is love? How many of you know that God is eternal? No, no beginning, no end. That means God is what? Limitless. So if God is pure, could he possibly see any impurity in me? I know, that, but that bothers Christians because they believe in sin. They don't believe in God. They believe in weakness. They don't believe in God. They believe in what they did. They don't believe God. Jesus said this to the Pharisees. He says, you search those scriptures hoping that they give you eternal life. Which to say is, they don't. Those scriptures point to me. And you won't want to receive me. To receive Jesus is to receive his logic about you. And his logic is, you are right. His logic is, you blessed. 
Now, if I have an offense against you, Sister Lily, I have an offense against Christ. Because in Christ's eyes, Sister Lily is all right. I want to bring up Sister Lily's faults. I want to bring up Sister Lily's shortcomings, but God can't see them. All he see is his promise and his design that he created her to be. He don't see nothing else. There is no variance in God's sight. What he designed you to be, that's all he sees in you. And I'm going to close with this one. We think we can will outside of the will of God. <laughs> we think we people created by God can will outside of God. You think your will is a match for God. Well, what about the scriptures that talk about freedom of choice? You got it. You can choose to be crazy if you want to be. God is not going to stop you from being insane. You can be just as nutty as you want to be. If you think you can out, you can out, if you think your will, which came from God, God created your will, gave you will. And see, will, this is back to increase, will is creative. God doesn't wish for anything. He wills, and when he wills, he creates. Oh, y'all better hear me. And he's given that same extension to his son. So when his sons will, his sons create. So watch this. If, so you, your creations will stay with you. Just like God's creation stays with him. And you will love your creations even if they are miscreations. How many of you have said you love something that you know ain't no good for you? Uh, don't let me start calling names. I don't have counseling with some of y'all. I'm in love with this and I know it ain't no good for me. Well, let's just, let's just talk about food. I love food. Chocolate cake, and I know it ain't no good for me. I love sugar, and, I, and my body got diabetes, and I know my, my body can't be eating sugar, but I love sugar. I just got, but I know sugar ain't no good for my body. But I love sugar. I gotta, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. <laughs> so you love, miss, your love is in the wrong place. You loving death. Though you've been told, come on, listen to me, that it's no good for your body. Yes. You love it anyway. Yes. You say something cute like, well, I'm going to die happy. <laughs> Some of y'all love smoking cigarettes. Though on the pack it says the term, the, 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 the the, the attorney general has determined that smoking cigarettes does cause cancer. Oh, but I love. So if when cancer shows up, don't go, oh, the devil gave me cancer. There ain't no devil gave you no cancer. Smoking that foolish cigarette gave you cancer. The devil, the devil, the devil. So you love stuff and you love it and it's your miscreation. And you will multiply. You will multiply and increase what you love. Some of y'all love being sick. Though you say, I'm believing God for healing. But you actually, and I didn't say all of y'all, some of y'all. Because you actually know that if I am ever healed, I won't get the attention that I love. This sickness brings me attention that I couldn't have when I was well. I got people calling me and visiting me and cooking for me and cleaning for me while I'm sick. They never even call me, visit me, or clean for me when I was well. I kind of like this attention. So that may have been your creation. 
and it's your miscreation. Yes. And it don't get better, it gets worse. You ever heard about the war on drugs? Anything you war against increases. Drugs and crime has increased expeditiously since the war on drugs and crime started. No war on nothing ever diminished. People think they can bring peace through violence. It's insane. When you get angry, you think somebody's going to hear you, and you think that your point is going to be heard and understood if you get angry. That's insane. Because the more you get angry, the more you continue to be angry. And angry will multiply. Pretty soon, you're angry and mad about everything. And now the joy of the Lord, which was your strength, is not there. What has replaced joy? High blood pressure. What has replaced joy? Back pain. What has replaced joy? Hip surgery. What has replaced joy? Cancer. Because you refuse to give up your anger that you love so much. It just increased. Oh, y'all listening. Now you're mad at God. Why you let this happen to me? Now you're not only you're angry with your friends, now you're angry with God. Anger just grows and multiplies. So Paul says it this way. He says, to, don't try to fight it because the more you fight it, even Jesus says, don't resist the enemy. Replace him. Don't do no warfare, just replace him. In the place of anger, laugh. Right. You have an opportunity. You can either be mad about this situation or you can laugh at this situation. And you say, hmm, ha, 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 you ain't going to bother me. How many of you know when you make the choice to laugh at a situation and say it won't bother you, that it goes away? But if you decide to address that situation, it, 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 it just sits there and festers and gets worse and worse. But if you just go, mm-mm, you ain't going to mess with me today. You ain't going to bother me today. I ain't taking, uh -uh, no, 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 no. You ain't messing with my day. I mean, you know that works. It works. It works. That's the law of life. I'm going to love you anyway. You're not lovable, but I'm going to love you anyway. How many of you know that folk will repent if you're good to them? What's going to happen is either they're going to be better because you're good to them, or they're going to leave you alone because they're tired of you being good to them. <laughs> See, the, the, God says it's his goodness that brings us to repentance. We'll change our mind because of God's goodness. If I'm tired of being good, if I keep thinking I don't, I'm not worthy of your goodness, I'll leave you alone. I'll find people who are not good to me because that's what I think I, I deserve. But if your goodness keeps telling me you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, then I'll begin to think, you know what? I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. And you need to be good without thinking you're being used. You can't give what you don't have. you got to be like Peter. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give. And when you give, it's given back to you. It's increased and it's multiplied. And if you give joyfully, it comes back to you joyfully. It's, it's working the law of life. Life. So a lot of people are here so that you can get rich, Sister Faith. They're here so that you can get rich. They're here to get on your nerve. But you say, no, you're not on my, get on my nerve today. You're not going to bother me today. I'm going to be good to you today. I'm going to pay it forward. God is good to me. I'm going to be good to you. Y'all learned something so far? I don't know what I'm going to stand to your feet. I am determined to be God's blessing. I'm determined to be God's millionaire, and I'm going to let him make me the millionaire the way he wants to do it. You know, I know a little bit about our musician's life, and I'm not going to put all his business out there, but uh, one of the things that is happening, and I hope that Brother Bobby is appreciating, one of the things that's happening in his life is God is multiplying him. 
And, you know, it's getting to the point, you know, just from, from an observer, I don't know the ins and outs, but I'm just standing on the outside looking in and it's like, he blessed. No, 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 no. I ain't talking about with stuff. Anybody get stuff. He blessed with stuff that come to testify about his character. People will come and testify about his character. People want to work with him. You know, some, some of y'all got, y'all good at what you do, but nobody want to work with you. He has creativity and genius where he can write songs for plays and movies and he can look at a scene and write a song for it. That's creativity. That is the, the creativity of God because he's in God's will. Now the finances and all that stuff, that comes later, but that's given because he's a financial thinker. He, he's financial. But watch this. As financially relevant as he is, he places being here with us priority. Yeah. See, they, Bobby, they don't know. <laughs> no, no. Their folk asked in him with big checks, come and do this and come and do that. And he said, no, I got to be in service. What? You looking at this money? Are you going to turn this money down? And one person he told me about actually acted like they were going to pay him. And acted like they were going to go somewhere else. And when they found out he was serious, they came back to him and said, okay, can we work together now? Now that church is over, can we work together? What is your priority? What is the way that, see, your logic where you think, as long as you're thinking in line with God and his mind, as long as you know that your will is in the will of God, in the will of God, I will do this. In the will of God, I will do that. Your steps are ordered and you are blessed. Yes. I said your steps are ordered and you are blessed. Yes. And as long as you're faithful in little, he will make you ruler over much. See, we're looking for the much, but we're not being faithful in the little. All right. Our value is wrong. Everything from the throne of God is valuable. Every person from the throne of God is valuable. You are valuable. Amen. And God will not do without you. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for these words. We thank you that those watching us are blessed. We thank you that they just increase and increase and increase and increase to your glory, Father. Your will is our will. Your will is done in the earth. In Jesus' name. Shalom.